From San Diego, California, this is the One Extraordinary Marriage Show, where being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex is taking the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663. That's 858-876-5663. In today's show, we talk about navigating your marriage when both of you are physically and mentally exhausted. And I want you to think about this quote from Michelle Rosenthal. She said, survival mode is supposed to be a phase that helps save your life. It's not meant to be how you live your life. Mm. Crazy how often so many of us talk about being in survival mode. But before we get to all of the meat of today's show, we want to welcome all of our brand new listeners. We know a lot of you are just tuning in for the first time and welcome to the One Extraordinary Marriage Show. Honor and blessed to have you with us. Absolutely. And we start each show with a hug and a hug is an opportunity for you to hear from someone else, someone else in the one family, just like you, someone who's going through a season or has been through a season and has experienced breakthrough. And this week's hug is sponsored by RX Bar Kids. And you can check them out at rxbar.com slash one. And this is, this is seriously, this is one of our favorite go-to snacks, you know, because they're, they're clean food, Mm -hmm. not just for the kids, honestly, but also for us. You know, they have egg whites, fruits, nuts, and that's just the base. And then they have seven grams of protein and absolutely zero added sugar. So all you moms out there, Hello, no added sugar, Bonus. no gluten, no soy, dairy, or the other bad stuff. And here's the thing, three fabulous flavors. We love the apple cinnamon and the berry, and they also have chocolate chips. So for those of you that need a chocolate fix, hello, Yep. they got you covered. And you know, it's perfect because whether you've got them in the car as quick snack on the go, throwing them in the lunch boxes or, you know, sports packs, trust me with an athlete in the house. We've got them everywhere. Yep. Pick them up at Target or for 25% off your first order, visit rxbar.com slash one and enter promo code one at checkout. Your kids are going to love the taste and you're going to love knowing that they're eating healthy. So this week's hug comes from an email that we recently received. This wife says, I've been listening to the podcast only since last spring and have listened to a few random episodes But now I've started from episode one and have made it to episode 44. Wow. Something on episode 44 prompted me to step out and email you. My husband and I have been married for almost nine months. About five months into our new marriage, I realized we were barely having sex at all. Mm. I was heartbroken, disappointed, and confused. I just didn't understand why it was so hard for uh, for us to connect. I knew in my heart that God didn't design it this way and asked him to step into our sex life. Mm -hmm. He led me to your podcast and the intimacy lifestyle. Right on. I finally got the courage and faith to talk about it with my husband and he was having the same feelings. I shared with him your podcast and things I'd been hearing from you two and finally got up the nerve to say, I want to do this intimacy lifestyle thing. I played that episode for him and he was on board. And that is episode 140. For anybody who wants to go to it, go to oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash scheduling sex. We've been going strong for a few weeks now, and he was the first to comment that he really likes it and feels it's working great for us, which I agree. We're talking about sex a lot more openly, trying new positions, pursuing each other in new ways, and it's just been really fun. I've shared your podcast with a handful of close girlfriends. I don't know if they've been listening, but I believe in what you guys are doing and saying and have experienced proof that it works. I hope you continue to educate and encourage newlyweds specifically about the realities of marriage. I didn't realize we'd hit a trouble spot so quickly in our own marriage, but I'm glad the Lord led me to the two of you and thankful for your faithfulness to your ministry. Mm. Love you guys. Awesome. I love those emails. Well, I love that, you know, this couple that realized that they were, you know, struggling so early on in their marriage. Which happens. uh, More than we'd like to think. Right. More than we'd like to think. And, you know, what we're talking about today, this idea of being, you know, physically and mentally exhausted, this is something that literally can start happening on your honey, your wedding night. I was going to say your wedding night because I think of back, I think back to almost 21 years, at least, and I are going on 21 <gasps> years of marriage. And oh I, my and, gosh, we were and so as soon tired. as you said that, I, I think back to that wedding night. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we were so into that day, right. which is totally what you want to do, right? You want to be into that day. And I, and for me anyways, I mean, I was just thinking like, oh my gosh, this is going to be amazing sex. We're married, da, 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 all this good stuff. But holy cow, we were 
absolutely so tired exhausted that day it was a warm day here in southern california we got married outside at a winery it was a long day family and friends and dancing and you name it yeah and you're a little bit exhausted and trying to have exhausted sex is exhausting yeah on top of it and and you know it's funny that we hadn't even made that con- uh, that connection as we were talking about the show and preparing for it because for us the exhaustion came out of the fact those of you that have been listening for the last few weeks know that tony and i just moved houses with our kids like well, we, and when she says just, we did it this past weekend. So literally you're, you're listening to us from brand new offices. Yep. <laughs> we are still living out of boxes in all different kinds of rooms and things like that. And, and we found ourselves in this place where, you know, we knew we were going to have to move. We got about 45 days ago, but mm-hmm. didn't find a place till about two, two and a half weeks ago. And so in the last two and a half weeks have done everything from work full time, Mm-hmm. to do all of the kids stuff. And, and we have, you know, an artist and an athlete. So there's lessons and practices and games and all this kind of stuff. Schoolwork. To schoolwork to, you know, just, oh yeah, by the way, you need to contact, you know, the 20 people that you need to set up services for. And you need to pack that house and move it from, you know, fortunately for us, we were only moving about what, seven miles away. Yeah. Seven miles. But it doesn't matter whether you're moving seven miles or a thousand miles, you still got to pack up everything and get it going. Right. Right. And all of those stressful events. Yeah. Little to no intimacy, especially because, you know, bonus for Tony and Lisa, I got my period last week too. So high stress, very fatigued. And she's got her period. Mm -hmm. Like it was the perfect storm to totally derail a happily ever after season in our life, right? It's, it's the kind of circumstances, like if you put all those together and just start spinning it, it actually looks like a tornado, right? And and that kind of tornado is incredibly devastating to marriages because that's where you get into those snippy little arguments. That's where you get into scorekeeping. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm doing this. Why aren't you doing that? That's where you get into the tension and the hurt feelings, the silent treatment or the explosive anger, whichever way you choose to go. And with all of that. And I don't even want to say your demeanor, oh, the yeah. words you don't say, but the attitude you're throwing or the, the, the physical manifestation of your frustration. Mm-hmm. So you may not be saying it, but they're, they're seeing it. Oh yeah. And you know, it's, it's, we're preparing for the show because we're just like, what are we going to talk about this week? And, and obviously being in the middle of this got us thinking, you know, where have we been over the last, like Tony said, it's almost 21 years for us. We've made 10 moves in 21 years Mm -hmm. together. And we've had moves, you guys, where it has been, um, moves where we actually stopped talking to each other, where we would just literally like, don't tell me what to do. I'm just going to keep bringing these boxes out to you. I'm not even going to talk to you. I'm just going to put on the back of the moving truck and you figure out where it's going to go or moves where, every single thing that's said to the other person is the wrong thing. Like you just, you can't say anything right. And I want to just say something right here. We're using the the move as our place of exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Use our move as an analogy of where you're exhausted in your life right now. Right. Because for some of you, it might be a new job that has different hours or is more demanding or you're maybe you're in school. I did an interview um, on going deeper with Elisa a couple weeks ago with Aaron and April Jacob of Nurturing Marriage, and he's in school and working full time. Hello, season of exhaustion, right? It might be that you have you know, a new baby in the house or you've adopted a child and that whole transition period where nobody's sleeping. Or you have three already and you just had another. Absolutely. Or maybe you've got, you know, your season of exhaustion is because you've got aging parents. And I just went through that. You can listen back to some shows in July. We've been discussing that with my father passing away here in July. That man, time of exhaustion. Believe me, July for me, I I remember waking up on August 1st, looking at Elisa going, where did July go? Right. Just seriously, physically and mentally exhausted. And I can't believe I woke up on August 1st, just going, where did, where did that month go? Because I don't even know. Right. We'd lost a whole month. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, another area where you may be dealing with exhaustion is illness, right? You're physically dealing with, with just your body being wiped out for whatever reason. And your spouse is dealing with the caring 
mm-hmm. of that. And, you know, all of these major changes can absolutely wreak havoc on your marriage because, you know, they lead to fatigue and fatigue and relationships can be a very, very dangerous combination. And, you know, the physical exhaustion, in all honesty, that's rest and relaxation, right? I mean, we're not going to dig so much into that. It's a factor in how the two of you relate, but this show, we're really going to focus on the, the mental exhaustion. And I want to do say one thing though, about the rest and relaxation, you need to take that time. Mm -hmm. You do need rest. You do need to take some time off. And coming from a guy who was an endurance cyclist, I didn't get that back in the day when I was younger, I would just, I'd go harder. I would go longer. I would try to go faster. And guess what? Over time, your body begins to break down because it's not able to recuperate. So what I've learned as I've gotten older, it's okay to shut everything off for a little bit. It's okay to get that downtime for a little bit. It's okay, but it's vital for you. And the way you decide to do that is up to you. I mean, some people may want to get a massage. Some people may want to just go soak in the tub. Some people may want to get manicure and pedicures. You may just want to go sit on the beach. You may just want to sit, you know, wherever your chill place is. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do take care of yourself physically because these bodies of ours, they're not going to just keep going, man. They, they are, they, they need that rest. Well, just like your marriage needs attention, your body needs attention too. Right. Right. And so often, you know, we'll take care of everything else, but we'll neglect those two areas. And, and when you get that mental exhaustion of just, you know, so many decisions and what are we doing and how's this going to work out? And, and, you know, maybe worry starts to set in your perspective towards your spouse. It starts to change. Sure you know, does. The, the scorekeeping thing, that's for real. That's for real because everybody thinks that they're doing everything. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you, those of you that have been listening for a while, you know, we talk about the two of you being a team, right? If, if you're saying, if you start keeping score in your marriage, you're not playing on the same team. Your emotions, guys, your emotions ride a crazy, crazy roller coaster when you're emotionally exhausted because y- you don't have the, the resources right? To take care of, you know, something hitting you sideways, you know, case in point. So this weekend, you know, we weren't sure we were going to make the big move this week, right? Cause we, we had two weeks to move out of our other place and we're like, Oh, we're going to take it easy. And I'm speaking at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. And because Abby's being homeschooled, I can't do my hair appointments during the week. Why don't you share where you're speaking? Cause that's here locally. Absolutely. Um, it's the sexy mama back to school Mama's back to school day out. And we'll put a link in the show notes. It's right here in San Diego. Um, There are still tickets available. So if you are in San Diego and you want to come just be pampered mamas for a full day, uh, Lucy Lampy, who's the mastermind behind the sexy mama movement, she is like this day is going to knock your socks off and I'll get to see you. So that will be something that we'll add into the show notes. But I share that because in the midst of all this move, I'm also getting ready to speak and at the beginning of uh, September, I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh crud, I need to get my hair done, right? Like I am not going to go stand on stage with all the grays popping out because of this move and everything else. They like came out in force. So I book my hair appointment for 7 a.m. Saturday morning. Well, we're moving on Saturday, guys. So I'm looking at Tony going, how is this going to work? I, I desperately need to get my hair done, honey. And I, I feel like I'm totally letting you down by not being at the house. And he's, he looks at me and he's like, babe, I got this. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to cry now. I'm going to cry. I'm still getting to get my hair done and we get to move. But you know, you find those emotions going up and down. How am I going to juggle all this? Like I'm super excited about a move, but it means I got to pack up and I hate, move, you know, and you just play all this crazy stuff or, and here's what I've learned over the years. Honestly, like Lisa said, we've done 10 moves in 21 years. It's part of our life. It's what we do. Um, you know, it, it's just what we, what we love to do, I think at times. And yet what I've learned through life and even our marriage, all of this is a journey we're on. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to the end of it. And even, even with all that's been happening in our lives this year, the perspective I've taken is that it's going to come to an end. Like we're going to come to a resolution. We're going to figure this thing out. And so with this move was the same thing. It's like, 
hey, I might have to I might have to be out there for 12 hours on Saturday. Okay. It doesn't mean I got to go fast and 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 just balls to the wall. You know, I can just take my time. Mm-hmm. Put it in there, put it pack up the truck nice, you know. Let's take our time. Let's make sure we're getting everything situated. And and even with kids and raising kids and things that I can remember back in the day when our kids were younger and everything was just sort of it was exhausting. Like I just wanted to sit on the couch and sleep and kids are jumping on you and all this stuff. And I wish that I would have realized then what I realize now is that that's a journey. Mm-hmm. But that's going to end soon. And, and believe me, for those of you who who do have littles or even kids who, that are just starting to go sideways on you a little bit, maybe, you know, and, and, and you got to get in their face a little bit more and you got you to get their attention back. They're, they're in a phase. I remember even for my own self when I was 18 years old and I looked at my parents and I said, you know what? I'm leaving this small town I grew up in here in Southern California and I'm going to the University of Colorado. My mom even just told me this over this past week when I saw her. She was like, you broke my heart. And I'm like, I get it. And I went sideways. But guess what? My parents were still there for me. The journey that I went on from when I was 18 to bringing Elisa to my parents' house that was a journey, and my parents st- stuck there with me, and it was one that I I had to live out. And that's you know, it's like Tony was talking about emotionally exhausting for his mom, yeah. right? And and when you're in when you're in this place of being emotionally exhausted, you'll either hear or you'll start saying things like, "I'm so tired. I just don't know what else to do. Why is this taking so long? I can't seem to see or straight or think straight. Everything hurts. Just why can't this be over already?" Or, or my personal favorite. I had no idea this was going to be so hard. I've uttered that a few times in the last month. And and here's the thing, though. When these things happen, you're being stretched. Right. You're growing, right? Which allows for more capacity for when you do hit that next level of mm-hmm. life, that next stage with your kids, that next stage with your business or with your spouse or with a partner or what, whatever it may be. Absolutely. And, and it's... You know, it's the realization that we as a society spend an inordinate amount of time being exhausted. It's almost normal, right, to be in this place of exhaustion. And so we don't even stop to count the cost or how it's impacting our marriages. And and we've got to be proactive about dealing with the emotional Ugh, the emotional exhaustion so that the two of you can stand together and, and to stand as a team. Because I will tell you, we've made those 10 moves in 21 years. I will tell you this last move, this last season that Tony and I have been in, uh, as crazy as our last six months have been, this move was the easiest move that we've ever made. And, and it became about how we, the choices that we made. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. That we weren't going to just allow this move and all of the emotions and all of the dreaded, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're moving again. And how many boxes do we have? And what are the, yeah, I mean, just that whole dreary, like Eeyore, like you all can hear Eeyore's voice from Winnie the Pooh, right? Oh, yeah. oh woe is me. me. You know, that kind of thing. Like I have to move again. Why can't we just stay in one place? You know, we just, we made a different choice this time around. And and we want to, we want to be able to share those specific action steps that we took this time that whether, like I said, whether it's illness or aging parents or new kids or new jobs that you can actually take into your life so that it doesn't have the impact on your marriage that just reacting Mm -hmm. does. Right. And and one of the things guys, I'm going to be real honest with you. One of the things that you need to do when you're in transition is you need to make sure that you're eating. Yeah, you got to fuel up. You got to fuel up. And you know, again, I just want to remind you this week to get your RX Bars kids at Target stores or get that 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash one. Don't forget to use promo code one because when we're, when we're hungry, let me tell you something, that hungriness, the hangries as they're sometimes called, that's no joke, right? All of this other stuff, you know, depends on you at least being resourced nutritionally. So make sure you pick up your RX bars kids this week. But you know, what did we do differently this time? Because again, this is the second move in a row that we've done and we've done the move in two weeks, right? The last move we made, we did it in a two week turnaround. This move was a two week turnaround. And this time we actually started planning as soon as we knew that we had to move. 
And here's the thing, guys and gals. Come to the plate. Be ready. Be expectant that you know your spouse doesn't have all the resources, possibly, to handle every single bit of it. Now, they may be able to hand, handle a majority of it, which is totally cool. You may It, it doesn't have to be 50-50. It may be 70-30 for all we know. Mm-hmm. But you need to come to the plate and be expected and be ready to to take on the challenge together. Absolutely. Because a lot of times in the past, we'd kind of, uh, the procrastination factor would definitely like oh, play fall out. into play. We're like, oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. And this time it was just like, no, we got to have a plan. And here's the thing. Those of you that have been listening for longer, I'm going to say longer than six months, know that Tony and I have talked about the coffee break mm-hmm. on this show. And we had actually taken ourselves like a six month coffee break or break from our coffee break. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of you've been asking about that. We have a new PDF coming out soon. It's going to be in our store, hopefully this week. So once it's there, we'll, we'll make sure to let you guys know that because this is one of the places, no kidding that you need to be doing. We needed to be doing it. And we weren't. And so like what we found ourselves over the summer was that we were really emotionally exhausted, right? Like we just weren't oh, connecting yeah. and, and we'd make those comments like, oh, this, why are we struggling so much? Right. And about a month, month and a half ago, we got back into doing our coffee breaks. And so we've been putting them, you know, on the calendar to do it. And what happened was, is that it allowed us to tackle the logistics because the coffee break has a logistic component. And it also allowed us to, to attack or discuss the emotional component of our marriage, right? So they were both getting addressed and nothing was slipping through the cracks on either one of those. Well, one of them is, you know, when are you got, when are you going to get time away? Mm -hmm. And so even though we have this move You know, we knew we had this move coming. We also know that our 21st anniversary is coming. And on that same coffee break, we're talking about moving into the new house. And we're also talking about, hey, just getting a night away right now, just because of what we have going on. Hey, we're still going to get a night away. But that's sort of the goal Mm -hmm. that kept us our eye on the ball here to get the things done at the house. Because we know we're going to we're going to get at least even just a night away right now for us is just primo. And, and we'll get more as we move forward. Yeah, we're just in a season. Right. So, so you do what you can in the season. The second thing that we did is that we started praying for this house and this move before we ever packed a box or moved anything in. Right? We prayed that we were going to like find the right house. And in, in, in itself is a God story. We'll save that for another show. Yep. But we prayed for our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And, and I will tell you, as we're moving in, it's the first time in all of those 10 moves where I walk up to our front door after, I guess it was on the second day of moving in, and there's a little bag of chocolate chip cookies with a note that says, welcome to the neighborhood. I just about cried, you guys. I just about cried because I was like, oh, I've been praying for our neighbors, right? Like I've been praying that we would we would find people that would just, you know, love on us and that we could love on them. And then we get chocolate chip cookies our second day. And I will tell you, there's no better way to get to a 14-year-old's heart than to bring chocolate chip cookies. You know, we, we invited our friends the very first night that we had keys. We invited our friends to come alongside of us and just pray for the season, to pray for the move, to pray for the house, to pray for what was going to come next. Mm-hmm. Right? So it wasn't, it wasn't like Tony and I were on an island because this is what happens sometimes when you're in those places of being exhausted. You isolate yourselves and you forget that, that you don't have to do this thing called life alone. All right. So for all you mamas out there who have youngins and maybe you're at home right now and this is a season or even you dads and and you're sitting here going, well, how does that relate to me? Well, one, pray over your family, pray over your kid, pray over your wife, your husband, make sure that that's happening. If you're in the neighborhood, make sure you start meeting new people, get out of the house you know, invite those people into your home, have play dates, do those things. Do not isolate yourself. Are you telling me there's nothing going on? If there isn't, then maybe it's you being called to start the group and the group doesn't have to last forever. The group may last for six months. It may mean that you just need to text a couple of friends and say, we're going to go do this once a week, but that's what you might need to do. Or maybe it's once a month, whatever you guys choose to do. But in that time, and this isn't a time to be exhausted even more. This is a time to go out there. Yes, you're going to run around with the kids. I get it. But give yourself that mental break mm-hmm. to chill, to relax, to enjoy what you get and what you do have. Mm-hmm. 
the the third thing that happened this time that set us apart was that Tony made the decision that this was not going to stress us out. And I want to be really clear that it was Tony that made the decision because I was still the one, you know, waking up at 4.30 thinking of everything that needed to be done. And Tony's like, babe, this is, this is not going to stress us out. So sometimes one of you has to take the lead into what the emotional climate climate thank you i'm like emotional mm-hmm. temperature what the emotional climate is going to be in your marriage because sometimes and, and you all know who i'm talking about some of you are warriors right you're the planners you're the i gotta think through all 50 million logistics and that's me and, and tony's just like we're gonna make this happen right tony coordinated friends to help us move he coordinated the logistics he was encouraging and he was patient and guys that was all a choice And because he did that and he led our family, there was not a single snippy word all day Saturday, which was our big move day. You want to talk about changing the the emotional exhaustion point? If if one of you takes the lead there, it sets the whole whole atmosphere. Football. You have a quarterback. You have receivers. You got your linemen. You have your running backs. They all play a part. They all play a part. They all do their thing. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the last thing is that you do what you need to do, right? What needs to be done, what you can do, right? Not everyone, like I'm not driving the moving truck. That would have actually like totally stressed me out. Probably would have stressed out Tony too. Oh yeah. Right? It becomes this whole divide and conquer. Like we were more Team DiLorenzo on this move than we've ever been on, on, on any of our previous like stressful stuff. Right. It wasn't, it was just like, babe, you do this. I'm going to do this. Okay. Well, let's tackle this. Let's tackle this. Okay. What do you think needs to be done here? Okay. I'm going to start here. I'm and, and any transition guys, any time of like heavy exhaustion. And we've been in all, we've been through just about all of it in the last six months, career or business changes, death of a loved one, a move. I mean, you want, it's like the top three, right? The only thing we didn't do was a baby and that's not happening. So, you know, but that, we have two of them. So we have two. We're good. So we're still running around with But them. I share that because it hasn't been an easy season. But because we made a choice that we were going to do these things, that we were going to pray, that we were going to have a plan, that we were going to, you know, create this emotional environment. Yeah, we're physically exhausted. I won't lie to you. The body's hurt. Oh, oh, I'm sore. Fingers are sore. Back sore. Shoulders. I've but got, yeah, it was a good workout too. I've got some random bruise on the palm of my hand that I have no idea. Like the palm of my hand is bruised. But because of all of these things and because we said, you know what? We're just going to tackle this together. I can deal with the physical exhaustion because emotionally, emotionally, we're in a much different place. And that's what we want for your marriages, right? We want you to be able to say, yeah, sometimes your body gets tired. Mm-hmm. That's called nap time. Do it. It's called soaking a tub. But if you can create a situation in your marriage by doing these things that keeps you from getting emotionally depleted, guys, it's a game changer. It's a total game changer for your marriage. Yeah, it really is. And for you guys out there, I mean, if you're in this state of totally exhausted all the time, we hope that what you heard today begins to shift something in you and allows you to see your life and your marriage from a journey perspective that is going to come and go. You're gonna have those times and yet there's gonna be things that you can do so you're not, you know? And so we're just praying over you this week. We're praying a blessing over you that you don't get so run down that you don't stay in the fight. Because too often, and this is what's happened to us as well, We get so exhausted, we forget about each other, and we put our marriage to fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh place. And before we know it, we wake up and we look at each other and we're like, who are you? So don't do that. You may be exhausted, and yet your marriage, your partner still needs you in the game. So what are you gonna do this week to get back in that game, to let them know that you love them? And for you as a partner, make sure you love on that spouse. Absolutely. Let them know. We love you guys, have a fantastic week. And we'll catch you next week. We thank you for all your love, your prayers, your guidance, and just being part of the one family. It's truly a blessing. Love you guys. Have a fantastic week.